Parental discretion is advised for the following program. The Now and Then Show is made possible by assistance from the following businesses. Southern Exposure, taking care of all your hair care needs, located on Main Street in Mendocino. Emma J's Home Video Movie Rentals, located on the corner of Lansing and Ukiah Streets in Mendocino. Fort Bragg Rental, the place to get all your Halloween costumes any time of year. And John Chamberlain, creator of fine signs, graphic arts, and posters. Living in America, we all have quite a lot to be thankful for. The cost of living, the cost of defense, and the cost of the now and then show. Starting that ever thankful, humorously humble, magnanimous man about time, Odd Bob Avery. This is Kelly Sanger inviting y'all to stay tuned for the next 60 minutes as we interview musician Philo Haywood. We also have tonight joining us Sea Ocean Divers, Dennis Cronin, and Dan Holden. Video movie reviews with Levin and Evans. Live music is provided by the Now and Then Orchestra. And now, here he is, that man about the town, odd and poppin' and hoppin' and boppin', Senator Odd Bob Avery. Whoa. Hiya. Hi, y'all. Whoa. Whoa. Come on. Somebody did that, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> Is it original? I, I just made it up. It just came to me. I don't know where it came from. Like well, howdy. Welcome. Good evening to the uh, Thanksgiving edition of the Now and Then Show. Uh, Thanksgiving is a time of year when people get together and celebrate family with one another. And I hope all of you will have the chance to do that this year. We have a good show for you tonight. You saw, all of you saw last time at Halloween, the Levin Evans video reviews. Did you not? Sure. Did. Yeah. Okay. All right. More of those for you tonight. We have a new member of the Now and Then Orchestra. We have Louie, Louie, John X, and Steve. Steve is our new boy. He wasn't going to wear dark glasses tonight, but uh, there was a little backstage coercion. Yeah. Yeah. We were throwing out the color keys with the color of our eyes. Right, no glass, no play, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what the producer said. Okay. Kelly, how are you? Fine, thank you. You look wonderful, darling. Well, thank you, darling. So do you. I always appreciate a Southern Belle. Well, what can I say? It's time to give thanks. It certainly is. It's a <sighs> Southern expression. It is? Okay, yes. I'll remember that. <laughs> I hope you'll all stick around because we have some interesting... The Urchin Divers? Yeah. Not, yeah. Right? Not a new band. Yeah. Not a new band. <laughs> well, we have our own orchestra, but they have some things to tell us about urchin diving. Makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, we'll be right back. I have a joke for you. A few words from Mikey Rooney. Have you ever wondered about the turkey you have on Thanksgiving? Where was he born? Did he have any brothers and sisters? What were his parents like? Was he talented? Did he have a desire to become something else besides a nice family dinner? What was his name? If you didn't think about this, don't worry about it. I'm told domestic turkeys are one of the stupidest animals alive or dead. Hi, Father S. Treatworthy here. You can call me Father Steve. When I've been listening to the sins of the world all day, there's only one way I can relax at home, and that's with heavy beer. 
I've taken a vow to celibacy, but I can still drink beer. So I drink a lot of beer. So the next time the sins of the world get you down, open up a 12-pack or two and wash those blues away. I was just getting into it, you know. Dun, 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 dun. Thanksgiving is a time of family, of getting together, of celebrating the the fact of being on this planet Earth and being thankful for it. It's a wonderful place, in spite of all the problems that we have. So let's all be happy that we're here on Thanksgiving. I do have one question, however. I want to ask Kelly, my lovely co-host, what this costume represents. Well, this is the spirit of Thanksgiving past, the cornucopia of thankfulness and plentifulness. I knew she'd have an answer. Ooh, well, it was quick thinking <laughs> on a short notice. What can I say? She's a good woman. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, we have some letters tonight. Well, read them up. What you got? The real ones or the fake ones? The real ones okay. and the fake ones. <laughs> All right. Believe it or not, we do get some real letters. And uh, I would like to encourage you out there, if you are a viewer of the Now and Then show, to write to us. If you have comments or suggestions, you know, let us know. No this changes. is a real one. Dear Odd Bob, what a heartwarming sight, your smiling, inquisitive face once again gracing our screen. Where have you been so long, buddy? Well, as you will recall, we had a summer break. Now we're back. Really missed you, parenthesis, and the show. <laughs> My kind of person. <laughs> Glad you're back on the air. Will you be regular now? <laughs> Sincerely, Julian G. from Casper. Well, Julian, I don't know what you mean by regular. Regular. But I'm gonna, you know, I'll give it my, uh, my best shot, of course, yes. Give it a, give okay. It a think. Okay. Uh, dear Count Avery. Oh, I know what he's talking about now. What a ghoulishly tasty show. I think you are finally coming out of the closet after all these years. <laughs> yes, the true you, Bob, the Count, lives. Fiendishly yours. And he's not giving his name. Blitter. Do you know what I'm referring to? Of course, I don't know. You were here. Leticia, don't darling, know. don't you remember? Oh, well, I don't know exactly. She was here, but she's gone now. Oh, well, I almost relapsed. There I know, I know. Dear Bob, really enjoyed your Halloween show. Most of all, I enjoyed the three women talking about the origins of Halloween. Good, all right. They were good. They were excellent, yeah. And, of course, I always enjoy your guest musicians. You mean the Now and Then Orchestra? <laughs> oh, no, 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 I, I lied. And the Now and Then Orchestra. Who is the orchestra these days anyway? Well, I told you earlier, it's Louie, Louie, John X, and Steve tonight. Okay. All right. Right, a little more gratuitous applause. All right, we got to have a sign up here somewhere, right? Applause, depression. All right. I hope you <laughs> get the hook. Where's the gong? Okay. I hope you will keep those interviews as interesting as the last one, and keep up the good work, fellas. Uh, may I remind ardent Anna from Albion that we do have women on the show too. We are not all fellas. Okay. That's right. Don't forget it either. Right. And that's the, uh, that's the letters. That's it? That's, that's all? It. Yeah, that's all the letters we got, unfortunately. I would like to sit here and read letters for hours if you just write them to us, you know. So why don't you do that? In the meantime, we're going to take a short break here for a couple of commercial breaks. We have commercials on this show, believe it or not. And we'll be right back. One, two, three, four. <laughs> This 
This is Kel Cosell and Mo Musburger inviting you to join us for the next few minutes as we review what's hot and sizzling in Jockware. Sunday is traditionally a day for rest and religion turns exciting as local heroes turn out on the field of Mendocino High School. We got your kickoffs, we got your out for passes, and we got tight, count them tight, big time muscles rippling in stretch pants. Now, who says you can't blend reds? John Wetzler proves once again that innovation on the field pays off. Check it out. Cardinal Rose hooded sweat, raspberry hot pants, fire engine red calf cutters. Hey, like this athlete has no trouble convincing the fan he's serious and hot stuff Step to boot. boot. Thatches, also known for his prowess on the pitcher's mound, gives us a casual view today in laid-back navy trousers, top of the good-looking duo, a sky-blue multicolored tank over brick-red fishnet tee. Add to this a verdant green baseball cap, and hey, he's looking good and staying cool. All right. Now then, who's got short shorts? Easy to bed and easy to rise. Ilya's got them, and hey, ladies, can he wear them or what? You will note the subtle combo of powder blue on white, white, white. The matching ensemble of cotton anklets and wristbands are always an inspiration to fellow teammates. Get down, Tinfo. Mm, mm, mm. And we have David Marks. He may be tall, he may be imposing, but what a nice guy. Personality himself reflected in aquamarine over the hip loungers and everybody's favorite dark blue sweats. Almost white socks add a splash of humor, and he's a winner when he scores in those comfy by the fireplace tennies. Speaking of winners, John Boom Boom Peterson, always a crowd pleaser, adds new dimension to the meaning of the midriff crop top when biceps abound. Yes, pastels are in this year, especially when paired with those oh-so-revealing lycra leggings you see here in bee-sting yellow, making this quarterback killer for sure. Ever on the ready, Mr. Mendo, Mike L. Evans, is here today in a classic scarlet and gray, soft fleece wear. The long pants are detachable, allowing greater freedom of movement, and as those bun-hugging gym shorts have cunning navy stripes down the outer thigh, he'll lose no attention at halftime. And that's a wrap. Hey, thanks for joining these two rambling, roving, racy reporters as we check out what's sizzling, what's hot, what's now, and what's in on the Sports Review. Remember, boys, this is Kel Cosell and Maul Musburger saying, don't forget, it's not who wins the game, how you play, it's how, how you, you look, look on the field. field. So check it out, stay tuned, and we'll be back next show. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interlude. You never know what you're going to see on the Now and Then show, especially between sets, right? Well, I enjoyed it. I bet you did. I did. Yeah, I know the audience did. Right now, we have a special treat for you. We're going to introduce a, uh, a man who has been singing, playing, writing, producing a great many things here on the coast for a long time. Somebody that you've all seen playing golf, and playing golf relatively well, as a matter of fact. Probably better than he sings. Do you, do you play golf better than you sing? No, no, I wouldn't say that. Okay, Philo Hayward. Let's have a good hand. Yeah.
crowds How many times Have I shouted out loud I need someone Thank you, thank you. Lots of noise on the uh, on the machine. There you look are. lovely tonight. Well, thank you. As usual. Well, thank you. Okay, I have a question <laughs> to ask you, Philo. <laughs> yes, sir. You're yes, the sir. only man that I've ever met in my life who has the name of two cities in his name. Well, I've been told that before, yeah. Uh, it's an interesting story there. Um, of course, Hayward is uh, uh, easy to recognize where that comes from. My father and mother had that, so they passed that one on to me. However, my first name, Philo, came down through my uncle's side of the family. He was, uh, <clears throat> he was, he's 86. I just saw him when I went home this last uh, week. And his name is Philo Lorne Harris. Philo. That rhymes with pillow. Okay, but not Philo. But not Philo, no. But it's spelled the same way as, as Philo. P-H-I-L-O. Anyway, he named his first son Philo. And uh, he was missing in action in 1945 when I was born, and so they tagged that name on me. Philo Hayward. Okay, but you were not born in this area, right? No, I wasn't. I was born in okay, Michigan. So you, you're a fellow. Michigan, got a all right. Michigan people out there, <laughs> half the crowd. <laughs> okay, but you, you were born well, a fellow, and when you arrived here in this area, it became Philo no, because no. it was spelled the same way, or what? what well, happened? no, that's an interesting story too. Philo, I sort of got tagged Philo all the way out the time I was growing up in high school. Whenever a principal or a teacher would would uh, see me, they would uh, see the name, they would say Philo, and. Uh, it was always a real sore spot for me. Philo was, I didn't like that. I had red hair freckles, I was you skinny, and my Philo, name was right? Philo. No, I, I preferred <laughs> Phil. I never let anybody know my name was I was, was going to say, you know, so skinny, got... red-headed guy with a lot of freckles and saying, hey, Philo, Philo, you know, you know. Philo Hayward, yeah, no, that was right. a Philo, actually. The, the worst one was Philo. Philo, I didn't mind. Why is that Philo much. worse than Philo? I don't know. I just, when you're a kid, you know, you don't want to be different than anybody. You want to be like well, everybody else. Truth. Yeah. And uh, I was not like everybody else. I was kind of weird, skinny, small, You too? Red hair, freckles. All right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? You were different too, I bet, weren't you? Same yeah. thing, red hair, skinny. freckles. Yeah. All right. I was skinny. Yeah. But you weren't Philo. No. No way. Stretch. <laughs> Stretch. <laughs> okay, back, back to the music, though. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the song you just played. Well, that song I wrote about, oh, six weeks, maybe two months ago, and I wrote it for my sister's wedding. Uh, she just oh. got married. About a month ago, a month and a half ago, and Louie and I and a couple other people went down to L.A. Louie, Dimitri, uh, went down to L.A. and put a band together for some friends of mine from L.A. And we um, played her wedding, and I sang that for her wedding song. We just recorded it and uh, sent her a tape. I haven't heard from her. I haven't seen it. My mom likes it. Is she, she in the biz? Uh, my sister, no. She's no. not. Okay, she's so you just did this for fun, right? I just did this for fun, yeah. yeah. And besides, she'd have killed me if I wouldn't have, so I had to do it. <laughs> Okay, let me ask you about something else. You, you work right here with the community school and with the Unified School District in Mendocino. And you do uh, uh, video production and video education, music no, education. Um, what is it exactly that you do? You do I did. I did for six years. Actually, I haven't been working for the school system for about three years now. But uh, uh, Chuck and I and another fellow, Amin, 
um, originally put the community school together, and that was in 1976. Chuck had been here a year before that, Chuck and Bush. Chuck Bush. I thought everybody knew Chuck. Charles. Bush. Charles Bush. Right? Charles Bush. Yeah, he changed that to Charles later on in his career. But anyway, yeah, Chuck and I and Amin put the uh, school together. Uh, we started out in one room uh, in the uh, upstairs a part of it. No ROP at that time. It was just the community school. And Chuck hired me. He was sort of the director of the community school at the time. And he hired me and said, uh, do whatever you want to do. And I went, well, I have a teaching credential. I graduated from Eastern Michigan University and got a teaching credential and then went before, uh, before I came out here. And we set up in a little room out uh, just outside of the school, up at the up on the upper campus up yeah, there. Yeah, I remember that. Right, and uh, he said, "Do whatever you want to do." I said, I said, "Well, I want to put a rock and roll band together, and we'll make it like football practice. We'll get all these people together and have a rock and roll band instead of football or cheerleading or whatever." So we took. Uh, in fact, Johnny Bush was in the in the uh, in the band. He was one of the first people I approached about it's it. Johnny X. Now. Johnny X. JD. Now, excuse me. Uh, Take a bow, JD. Come on, jo Johnny, stand up. Johnny X. Show Johnny your face. Johnny X. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of my uh, best students all this all these years. Look at that, he's still doing it. By the way, what does ROP stand for exactly? Um, Regional Occupational Program. Okay. I b it, right? That's correct. That's right. I and don't, we don't we all don't know that. Oh, well, that's what that means. Well, thank you. It used to be ROC, Regional okay, Occupational. No, Taking it one step regional further, what is Regional Occupation Program in terms of the schools? What does it mean? Well, I'm not sure I understand that question. <laughs> well, you have a school district and you have regular classes, and then you have all of a sudden this thing over here that's right, set aside I, to I call the ROP. I right? got you. Uh, what is the how connection? Is that, how is that founded? Right. Well, what does it have to do with schools and me? That's you know, a good question, Bob. I, I'm not sure how, that, how to answer. No, <laughs> I do know. I know how to answer that one, really, seriously. Um, John X? John X. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know how that got together was um, uh, Chuck and I, well, here's how it got together originally. Um, we were looking for ways of funding our program because we had a pretty unique program. About two years into the program, I had put a little, we took the, uh, some, a music storage room down in the old, um, the old community school building, which originally was the old maintenance bu building for the school. That was building. underneath the gymnasium, that, right? Well, it was next door to the gymnasium, the building uh, okay, that burned yeah, down. Yeah, one. Well, now that, w I cleared out a space, Bob Ayers, I kind of stole it from Bob. Thanks, Bob, I, I appreciate <laughs> that. I never did get a chance to thank you, but thank you. He deserves thanks. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Oh, thank Bob you, Bob Ayers. Hey, Bob. Anyway, he gave me this, he gave me this room, and, um, it was it basically was two rooms and it was just storage and they had all their drum stuff in there and, and equipment that they had broken and stuff. We cleared it out and we put in a recording studio, and I bought an eight-track machine and a, and, a, and, a, and a board which they're using in there now still really? this for the very video moment? at this very moment. Now you know it, why we have a few problems here, folks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the. Uh, uh, th that was how that went was we put a little recording studio together in there and, and we started a, uh, uh, a rock and roll program or it was more of a music rock and roll contemporary pop program and it got pretty successful and we were looking around for ways of funding it and ROP was looking for a way to get into the community school or to the school district and it just sort of came together and coalesced and then okay, we now, ended up with a program. But in terms of ROP that's a, a something that comes from the county? That's a county program, and it's, it's state-funded, yeah. Okay. That's what I want to know. It's different from the Unified School District. It is. It's different from the Unified School District, absolutely. Right. So you're responsible for the origins of this whole thing that we're doing right now. The audio video, I think I probably am more... Oh, okay. okay. I'm going to be talking to you a little later. Yes. <laughs> In the meantime... That's, that's why I'm wearing these sunglasses, Bob. No, those actually, are, I'm those wearing... Those are sunglasses? Yeah, oh, I can see good. your eyes. Well, that's good, yeah. Now look at the band, so you, well, know. Yeah, you I know. cannot that, see their that's eyes. That's why I'm wearing them. These guys are all in my band in regular real life, see? And real uh, life? This is real life? Well, no, this is, <laughs> is this real life? I thought this was Your school. Your band is not real. What band? What this band? Is, this school. is school? Yeah, isn't this kind well, of Well, that's school? true. This is a class, sort of. But it is kind of real life. I mean, we can pretend like it's real. Okay, right? let's... Uh, let's uh, Mike? Yeah, he said yeah, yeah, right. he I can the hear him back and forth. Yeah, that's real. Okay. We would like you to sing another song for us right now. Well, shucks. Can you do that? Sure, you, I you, can do you that. you still have your guitar here? In <laughs> I do, oh, I right, do. Great. Here, Thank let you. me take my... What, my are you, uh, what are you going to sing for us? Well, this is a song that... Um, let me see, who wrote this? Uh, Shel Silverstein. It's one of my favorite songs. You'll get a kick out of it, I think. I'm sure I will. If Shel wrote it, I'll love it. Take your time.
Oh. oh, she's got it off of it, but I didn't want it. <laughs> All right, one more time, follow Hayward. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. This is a song Shel Silverstein wrote and Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings recorded this song. It's, uh, it's a good song. I like it a whole lot. I got a couple more years on you, baby. That's all. <laughs> Excuse me, I just dropped my cigarette case. I've got a couple more years on you, baby, that's all. I've had more chances to fly, more places to fall. It's not that I'm wiser, it's just that I've spent more time with my back to the wall. And I've picked up a couple more years on you, baby, that's all. Well, I've walked a couple more roads on you, baby, that's all. Yeah, and I'm tired of running Well, you're still learning to crawl yeah, And you're going somewhere And I've been somewhere And found out it's nowhere at all And I've picked up a couple more years on you, baby, that's all Play it, Louis. Now saying goodbye, girl, don't ever come easy at all But you gotta fly cause you're hearing them young eagles call Someday when you're older, you smile at a man Smile at a man strong and tall Say I've got a couple more years on you, baby, that's all Yeah, I've got a couple more years on you, baby, that's all Well, I've had more chances to fly, more places to fall It's not that I'm wiser, it's just that I've spent more time with my back to the wall. And I've picked up a couple more years on you, baby, that's all. And I've picked up a couple more years on you, baby, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. All right. Paolo mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Paolo. Good All right. stuff. Paolo's going to be back with us a little later, and we have a special treat for you when Paolo comes back. In the meantime, I'd like you all to take a little break right now and watch this.
A further statement from Mikey Rooney. You know, sometimes I watch TV lying on the couch, sort of imitating a potato, and I think of ways to improve the programming I watch, but I keep coming up with the same remedy. Turn off the TV and go to bed. I used to drink light beer, but my girlfriend complained. It didn't last long enough, so I drink heavy beer now. This is a beer with stamina. Somehow that introduction seems really appropriate for what we're going to do next. Do you know what we're going to do next? I'm afraid I do. Oh, you do? Okay. I do. I know these two. <laughs> does that frighten you? No, it encourages me. I hate to say it, but it does. Okay. <laughs> They're buds, big buds. Okay, what we'd like to do right now is introduce a new group, the Urchin Divers. Yeah. And these wait, 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 wait. Hey. It's not what you think. It's not a band. I'm sorry. Mollusks I'm sorry. Of I'm, the sorry. Family. I'm sorry. These guys are really urchin divers. Really? <laughs> okay. Can we have a hand for Denny and Danny? Come on. Oh, hello, dude. Hello. Nice to meet you. Okay, that's uh, that's Denny over there, I think. That's Flash. Denny and this is Danny, right? Yeah, I do, I do. Okay, you're Dan. Should have been in it. You you're Dan been. and you're Dennis. I'm Dennis. You're he's Dennis, Dan. he's Dan, okay. Dan and Rowan, remember that? Dan and Rowan? No, oh, I remember yeah. Martin yeah. Rowan. <laughs> okay. What we got here is a real interesting topic. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Urchin diving. And the reason this is interesting is why do people take a boat which costs a lot of money and park it 17 feet from the cliffs when the waves are up and they get off the boat, they go under the water with diving suits, leaving the boat alone, totally jeopardized, never knowing when that 100-foot tsunami is going to come in. Why do they do this? They're urchins. They're urchin divers. Okay? Now, now, my question is, what are urchins and why are they so valuable? They are ugly. They, they ain't worth nothing. <laughs> Us, we just guys, we just pick them up. Dan, maybe I should ask you. <laughs> no, I'm the boss. No, 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 no. He's Watch. from New York. It's you know, your he, boat. You can't understand him. It's okay. Try but he flies. He flew down here well, from he Washington flew, well, he to go out I on the boat with you. I picked urchins for a lot of years. Okay, now I why are urchins, urchins? Why are urchins so valuable? Because the Japs like them. Okay, now the Japanese like Japanese, them. Excuse yes, the Japanese. Me. Okay. The Japanese. The guys, you know the guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're still with us, Michael? Good. All right. You know, you know what I mean. I know now. what you mean. You know what now, I mean. Let's go back one or two okay, steps, okay, and we the say, Japanese. okay. The, Jap the uh, Japanese, the guys. <laughs> the guys bomb Pearl Harbor, you know. Okay. Gee whiz. <laughs> the reason they're so valuable is that the Japanese people eat them as a, a, a delicacy, right? Yes, it's, a, it's okay. um, what do you say here in America? You call it a aphrodisiac. Oh, maybe. an No, not an aphrodisiac. No, and what minute. exactly does that mean? I ate some raw urchin one night down at the Salmon Point restaurant. Okay, and it was, it was bitter, it was caca, I mean, I didn't like it at all. Now, why, the only reason that these people could no like taste. it, no, 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 wait, the no only, taste. okay, but the, it's an acquired taste? Hey, well, maybe, you know. Okay, if it's an aphrodisiac, that could be the only reason why anyone would like an urchin, because they're just, uh, yeah, you know, they taste terrible. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Japanese, <laughs> you know, Japanese, do you see Could you Japan? explain this to us? What, what is it's it? It's a traditional thing in the Japanese. What does it do for you, exactly? 
Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what what, what is does it for me is it pays a lot of my bills and it does back rent good. and uh, makes me a lot of money. And okay, this ties into harvest and Thanksgiving, right? Harvest, moon, and the Thanksgiving. The harvest and the bountiful. And I'm very bountiful thankful the Japanese eat fruits right. and roll. Cornucopia of Thanksgiving, oh, okay. which is an American tradition, right? Right. Eat but I have a turkey. question now. I have, I have a question for Dan. You said <laughs> urchin row. They don't eat the urchin proper. They eat the row of the no, urchin? No, just the row. They eat the row, and uh, uh, urchins are, they have... Uh, <laughs> babies, row. They have babies. They, they spawn. They have, uh, they are hermaphrodites. They are, Which urchins means they are both male and female. procreate themselves. They procreate themselves, and the Japanese are interested in the row. And we harvest the urchins, and they process the urchins and crack them open just for the row, and dispose of everything else, and process and ship the row to Japan. Help. Okay, now that thing I ate down at the Salmon Point restaurant, <coughs> was that the row or was that the urchin that I ate? Was the row bitter? It was the row bitter? What did it look like? Yellowish like? row. That was uh, most likely the same urchins that I brought up. Up to the salmon point. Uh, he probably got it from a here a few days unsuperior ago. diver, some jerk who didn't know what he was picking. Okay, how he, deep do you have to go to get these? Well, it depends on the weather. Usually the urchins are anywhere from uh, 10 to 25 to 30 feet of water. What do you that's wear a, when a you lot. go under there? No, that's shallow. What do you wear? What do you wear? Well, just shallow. typical wetsuit. Uh, Wetsuits and tanks do you no we don't wear tanks we use tanks uh, are very heavy they weigh about three tons. gear we have a <laughs> compressor on the boat with hoses so you have a boat and a hose and a diver Animal. or two Animal. and uh, you go to a, what you think is a typically good urchin spot and you anchor up your boat and you jump you over the side it just takes a lot to know what you're doing seems in this business let me explain something to you before you think everybody you're going to get everybody to learn this business you gotta know what you're doing. Right. See? Now me, I don't look all that smart. <laughs> Just but tell us about it. Just tell us all. No, I can't about tell you it. If I tell everybody in the world what to do, they'll have my job. So I cannot. Yeah, yeah mine too. Folks, <laughs> I cannot tell you my job. <laughs> but okay, it well, is well, very. You gotta know what you're basically, doing. Basically, Mr. Producer, what we need to get out of this is about one minute, right? Okay. <laughs> What do you okay, do exactly? So let me, no, no, let me but I do. I mean, anyone can do what I do, really, but... Can I do it? Anybody can't do what I know. You can't do it. Okay, you need you training. Do you do a lot better off on land. No, no, Believe me, no. you'll do a lot better off on land. You need a lot of training to do what you guys do, right? Do you right? pick them? No, no, not really. It takes a certain person. See, you don't... It, you know, anybody... See, older, he's a good... He'd be a good diver. See, I know I've been around the world. So you stay on the boat while he dives? Because oh, no, 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 I dive. I'm a good diver. I enjoy <laughs> diving. <laughs> because the dangers of diving are, are so... Nothing danger. There yeah. is danger involved, but... But you have to know what you're doing exactly. Maybe. It okay. depends. It depends. Okay, one, one more question. Why do you guys do this? Why do you jeopardize yourselves? Money. Why do you jeopard Money? Like is that money. it? That's yeah, the bottom like line money. is money. Money. Okay. And, what do you and do that all comes money? from Japan? No, it comes from here in Japan. You sell some in San Francisco, too. We, anyone who wants to buy it, we sell it to them. Yeah. Okay. But the bottom line is money. Money. And that's yeah. why you go out and risk yeah. your lives exactly. and you dive and you yeah. take well, chances. Same, same reason everybody does. Let's be fair. We all work for money. Yeah, no, but we don't do what you. they're doing. We don't risk our lives. I do. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dennis It's a pleasure Danny. being here. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Thank you for sharing. Oh, I'm not going to ask you about so driving much. a taxi cab in, in the Bronx. Oh, you ain't. No, man. not going to. We'll be right back. We're going to take a short break. <laughs> <laughs> Final statement from Mikey Rooney. I've been noticing lately 
a subtle change in the attitude of the quote powers that be in Mendocino. What I'm talking about is the increasing pressure for locals to view our small town as a big city. More police, more rules, and more general authority. I think the people who live in Mendocino enjoy living in a small town. They're very independent and they like the freedom of being here. No one used to care if someone parked backwards on Albion Street or the local kids hung out on the corner of the old x lax building or rode their skateboards down Lansing Street. But now the highway patrol has moved off the highway, probably out of boredom, and into Mendocino to hassle locals for anything the CHP feels is an infraction. These things are what make Mendocino and what give it its character. Do these chips even live in town? What I'd like to see is the highway patrol to stick to the highway and not hassle locals for parking on the corner outside the bank for five minutes while they return a videotape or run into the bank. 10-4. Okay, we're, we're, <laughs> we're back, Philo's back, we're all back. <laughs> Kelly, do you remember in the Halloween show when we did the movie reviews? Mm -hmm. What did you think of them? Well, I was sitting right here and I, I didn't get, I didn't, couldn't I couldn't really get into I, them, right? I, I, yeah, I had the same problem, I, I couldn't I, really get into them. I, I well, do y'all know what we're talking about? Y'all saw the movie reviews, didn't you? Okay, you all saw them, the Levin Evans yeah. oh, movie yeah. reviews. But where was Levin? Yeah. I want to know where Levin was. Yeah. I want to know where, my, where Levin was. Levin is backstage. So is Evans. Robert, where are you? But Evans comes out as a different character when we do these things. As you will see right now, while we have a look at well, some Levin Evans Yeah, if he could only reviews. talk what he could say, I'll tell you. Welcome to the Now and Then Video Movie Review, brought to you by M&J's Video on Lansing Street. This week marks the debut of the Levin Evans Review, featuring Robert Levin and Blind Lemon Evans. This show, since it is the Thanksgiving show, we will be reviewing Prince's movie Under the Cherry Moon, which I myself am giving the Turkey of the Year Award. Under the Cherry Moon stars Kristen Scott Thomas and Jerome Benton. Uh, Kristen Scott Thomas plays Mary, Jerome Benton plays Tricky, um, Prince's sidekick. Prince plays Christopher in the movie. Christopher and Tricky are two gigolos who make their way around Europe living off the money uh, of divorcees who really need the companionship of younger men as to how these two younger men convince any woman to keep their companionship is unbeknown to me. <laughs> it is a fantasy, Michael. <laughs> also, okay, the movie is a fantasy. I'll agree with that, Robert. Thanks for getting me back there. Um, the movie uh, starts out with uh, Prince and Tricky looking for another rich woman to prey upon. And in the one, very beginning in the movie, he meets Mary at her 21st birthday party. Actually, they meet in a bar where, where he plays cocktail uh, piano man or something, you know. He plays the cocktail piano. And uh, she, Tricky keeps sending messages that this lady is hot for him. Well, eventually she has this party soon after this and, and her 21st birthday party where she is due to inherit $50 million in a trust fund. So uh, Christopher, Prince Christopher, thinks that uh, he might be able to get involved with this lady. The clip we're going to see 
is where he is at the party and kind of is turning on the charm to convince Mary that he is a very charming and worthy person to become involved in. She uh, is definitely undone by his charms in the way that she kicks him out of her house. <laughs> After this, Mary thinks a lot about what Prince told her on the porch there and tries and goes out of her way to uh, see Prince and goes out on shopping sprees with him, gets to know him more. And Prince thinks he's getting in pretty well and, and might get part of this money, but along the way he falls in love with Mary and sort of wants to become an honest man. The, um, the parts that are played by Prince and Jerome Benton are unbelievable to me. Also, I think everybody else in the thing acted very good. I, I thought the acting was really well done, except for Prince and Jerome Benton. Every time they uttered a word or made a facial expression, I couldn't believe that this is what they were supposed to do. Uh, myself, I didn't like the movie. I, I wanted to turn it into a comedy by erasing all the dialogue and writing my own dialogue and overdubbing it. Well, Robert, what, what did you see in this movie that sort of stuck in your mind? You know, I mean, Well, Blind, if you want to know the truth, it actually more stuck in my throat than in my mind. <laughs> I can see why it was. I agree with you that uh, the other characters are played believably and the acting is reasonable enough but when it gets to the two principals Christopher and Tricky the whole credibility of the movie falls apart they're so silly they're so unbelievable they're so fey and sleazy and uh, almost slimy that you wonder how any woman much less a sophisticated attractive well-to-do French Riviera woman would fall for either of the, these two Either of them, yeah. Either of these two Especially low this, life uh, characters. This cross between, I think, as you said earlier, Robbie Benson and Little Richard. Uh, Robbie Benson and Dragon and Little, Little Richard. I think uh, Prince pays homage to uh, his idol, Little Richard, in here, even though he doesn't say anything about it or doesn't want you to feel that that's what's really happening. He looks more like Little Richard than anyone. That's true, he really does. Does uh, any part of the movie, does it come out in such a way that, that say, like, that attracted you. I say, well, this part of the movie was good, or, or, like, I in my part, I think that the sets were done very well. The production level was was high quality. The production values are actually quite lavish. They have, uh, uh, there were beautiful homes and lavish parties, and uh, all the uh, people of the parties are well dressed, and there's wonderful uh, accoutrements and food and uh, the finest of everything. The uh, it's a handsomely mounted production, although the movie is filmed in black and white, which I find a real artsy pretension at some sort of deco modern look that yeah, well, seems to was he add, it, well it adds to the it adds to the fantasy feeling of it all because you you realize from the outset that this movie is not supposed to be uh, anything realistic. It's just I mean it's actually to my way of thinking Prince's ego fantasy. And the way that the movie is filmed comes across as this um, sort of pseudo slick looking uh, set piece that, as a young man trying to appeal to rich, sophisticated women in France, uh, how he could come on like this and expect to attract anyone I, is, I, is really ludicrous. Yeah, really. I, I fail to see his reasoning behind that. Maybe that's why it is a fantasy. But anyway, on a general uh, review level of the Levin Evans review, my number on the 1 to 10 scale is a 2. Uh, Robert may have a different opinion here. I'll be charitable, Michael. I'll give it a 2.31. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear you're a little more charitable than I am. <laughs> so anyway, this is uh, Blind Lemon Evans. And this is Robert Levin. And uh, for Emma J's Video Store, this has been the Levin Evans Review, and we'll see you next month on the Christmas show with Another review, and thanks for tuning in. Good night. Night. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciated that. Say good night, Dick. That was good. Say good night, Dick. Thanks, Mike. Okay. Thanks, Bob. All right. What you just saw were the the Levin Evans, Levin Evans. video reviews. I heart my cat. Save the medfly. Right. Do you want to give them a rating from one to ten? Oh, Bob, I'll always give a big ten, and Mikey. 
Well, politics, you politics. Get Mikey, Big you know. Ten, Big Ten. He's my boss. What can I say? Okay, I'll give him a nine. Boss. Give him That's a big fair. Ten. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's politics. What the hell, folks? You know, small town, small That's town. You gotta small live. Towns, you gotta eat. You know, what can politics. I say? Okay, right now, however, politics and no politics. We're going to talk to an interesting man who has something interesting to tell us about some of the current play things that are happening in Mendocino. Yeah. Did I phrase that right? Okay. Chris Byrne is his name. All right, Chris. And here he is. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. Good to see you, my boy. Hey. We go back quite a ways here, don't we? It's been a, been a, a while. But right now, Death of a Salesman uh, is on, and that's one of the reasons I've, I've come on, on television, is because I figured this is one way to get the mass audience. <laughs> they love it. Who directed this, Chris? Uh, directed by Sue Wynn. Oh, Sue. Uh -huh. ah. And okay. there's, uh, I, good, good I, I know I don't have time to go through the whole cast, but just let no. me say that, that uh, <laughs> Sue directed it. Every uh -huh. single person, every, even the, down to the little bit uh, uh, parts, is and just absolutely diet. excellent. And but uh, I just want to say, uh, get up, out of your seats, turn off the television set I'm right going, now going, as I'm, I'm speaking going. to you. Get up, out of your sets. Over there. And Go to your windows, throw open the window, and say, I'm sick and tired of television and the uh, now and then show. And get out. Get out to the theater. Go to the theater Shame right now. No. Let's try it. I'm, I'm sick and tired of television. You know what's happening now, don't you? No. Come to the end of the show. Oh. No. I'm sorry. No. Well, it has to happen every time. Somewhere along the line, you got to come to time, time, time. Well, right? let's okay. end it with a bang, not a whimper. Let's do it. Okay, and let's thank the people that were here. Thank you, Dennis and Danny. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Chris. Where are you? Chris Byrne. Okay, there he is over there. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Now and then, show. And thank you, Philo Hayward. Philo, thank you couple little reminders before we do something exciting right now. Remember the Christmas show right here on Now and Then. We'll be back at Christmas time with lots of Sandy Clausy kind of things, you know. And I want to tell you about Kelly, who's going to be singing at the Seagull in December. Thank you. December 11th. Okay. No. Right. There. I do. Yeah. And I want to thank all, all of our production people who are here tonight and our wonderful audience. Yo! Yeah. yeah. So, we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, an animal song. Okay, you want an animal song? We got an animal song. Kelly is going to sing with Philo right now. Do you have anybody you want to say hello to, like Mom? Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Okay, hello, now, Mom. go sing. We want to hear you sing. Kelly and Philo, let's sing. Let's go. All right, all right. That's the end of the show. I'll do that. Thank you. This is an old song by Sam Cooke.
Chimney now.